the SnowRunner developers have released an update to their ongoing content roadmap for the game. However, we need to talk about not only the content roadmap, but where the game has come from versus where the game is going. Also, quick disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed in this video are my own and may or may not reflect those of community members, mod creators, developers, and so on. And if there is anything in this video that you disagree with, I am more than happy to have a discussion about it in the comment section down below. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the topics of this video. So first up, the content roadmap, and more specifically, this part right here, the 2023 section. Now, Season 9 Renew and Rebuild is where we are right now, then there is Season 10 Fix and Connect, Season 11 Lights and Cameras, and then Season 12 Expansion 3, as well as cross progression being a free for all upgrade across the board now cross progression has been something that has been discussed kind of back and forth throughout the entire lifespan of snow runner and i remember it being something that people were mentioning even in my comment section when the game launched because they were like oh let's say i'm going from an xbox one or an xbox one s to an xbox series s or xbox series x and i want to carry my progression over or i want to carry my progression from ps4 to ps5 or even you know PC." PC to Xbox One or PC to PS5 or PC to Switch, however the transition was going to work, people wanted to be able to carry their hard work over from one platform to another. And I completely understand that, although I will say, for a feature that was that heavily requested, it is interesting that it didn't get even introduced to the content lineup until basically three years after launch. Now, content delivery logistics aside, there are some more underlying things that we are going to need to talk about in this video, and they are more in line with the reasons why I put that little disclaimer at the front, so uh, from here on in the video, it might get a little bit spicier. Now, let's start by talking about the modding community. Yay, the modding community itself. What a spicy topic, literally, to kick off the video with. Well, technically, we didn't kick off the video with it, but either way. So, the modding community is one of the driving forces that keeps this game and keeps this community alive. Now, I am aware, yes, that there are many people out there that play this game and the Runner series in general, not just SnowRunner, but from Spin Tires to MudRunner to SnowRunner, in their entire vanilla state and have no interest in mods whatsoever. And I'm not denouncing that gameplay experience. I think that gameplay experience is 100%, like, valid 100% chill. And I did vanilla playthroughs on MudRunner and MudRunner American Wilds. You can find them on my channel. So I have experience with playing the game in that way. However, at a certain point, there comes a time where, at least for me, once I've done a lot of vanilla gameplay, I just want to have fun with the game and enjoy trucks that I like in real life. Because a lot of the trucks in these games, you either don't see very often or they are not as relatable to you as a lot of the trucks that end up getting made as mods. Now, this truck, for example, the Mega Cab, I mean, this is a prime example of trucks being relatable and pe people wanting certain trucks in the game solely for their relatability. Now, that's not to devalue the performance capabilities of this truck or all the different ways you can customize it and build it and things like that. But make no mistake, if this truck had a golf cart engine and could only go five miles an hour, people would still download it because it is relatable. I would still download it because I love the way it looks. I love having a Mega Cab in-game. I, I remember when the third-gen Dodge Mega Cabs came out when I was like, you know, I don't even remember how old I was or what, like literally you know, what age I was when the third gen Mega Cab came out. I don't really want to do the math in my head right now, but those trucks were a truck that I legitimately looked up to, like, when I was a kid, and I was like, I would love to have one of those someday, and I did get to own a third gen Dodge at one point. It wasn't a Mega Cab, but still, I loved that truck, and it was a truck that I looked up to, and it was something that I really wanted to work for, and it was something that pushed me at that age, and I think that that's why so many people, regardless of age, want to see relatable trucks in the game, whether that's a pickup truck or a semi-truck or just something that speaks to their real-life experience of the vehicles that they fell in love with in the first place, whether that was, you know, uh, as a kid or in their adult life. 
Now, unfortunately, one of the downsides of a game with this broad of a reach in terms of mods and player base brings with it a fair share of ups and downs, right? There are the good points of it and there are the bad points of it, especially when you have a mod browser that is shared between PCs and consoles. Now, what ends up happening is that you end up with a very interesting ecosystem for mods where obviously this game is going to be played more on consoles. So that's where a large share of your player base is. However, with console modding restrictions, it puts a very odd hold on mod creators that literally model these trucks out and create them from the ground up to where essentially sometimes they might have to walk back their own vision of what they see in a mod so it can be applicable to consoles and so that more people can use it. Now, while some mod creators lean into the ability to have mods on console, other mod creators back away from it and prefer to do only PC mods. And now, there's nothing wrong with one way or the other. That is not me taking some sort of stance and saying, well, you need to do it this way or you need to do it this way. There is no right way or wrong way to mod this game. There's really only whatever way the modder themselves choose to do it. And us as players get to enjoy what these mods creators have done because make no mistake mod creators put in hours and hours and hours just to be able to get their vehicle in game and that's not counting texturing tuning getting it to run and drive the way they want it to getting it to interact with trailers the way they want it to getting it to interact with the environment the way they want it to there's a lot that goes into just merely getting the trucks in game and unfortunately, what sometimes happens is while you might think that a lot of mod creators would like, you know, do one thing over here and then another thing over here and then another thing over here and sort of, you know, do their own things. Sometimes there have been disputes that have been had and that has caused, let's just say, certain degrees of unrest throughout parts of the modding community. And essentially what that led to, especially, you know, in the first year of the game, is it created created a lot of division, uh, unfortunately. It created a lot of splitting up in the community to where you would have scenarios like, well, if you want to use this person's mods, you shouldn't be using that person's mods. And if you use that person's mods, well, then you're just, uh, insert whatever generic insult here. And unfortunately, in some areas of the community, the back and forth got so intense and so bad that some mod creators either completely stepped away from the game or stepped away for almost a year, if not longer, before returning. And despite all of that, the modding community behind this game is still there. The modding community behind this game is still healthy, and the mod community behind this game continues to make trucks, continues to make trailers, continues to make maps, and continues to enjoy the game. And so does the player base that uses these mods. And I think in a perfect world, I think mods and developer-made DLC and, you know, content roadmaps and all of this stuff should be able to coexist in a happy, chill environment. However, I genuinely don't understand why some parts of the community cannot allow other parts of the community to just simply exist and enjoy the game a different way than they might enjoy it. And the biggest area where I see this, well, it's two areas where I see this a lot, and especially as someone that has literally been playing the game since launch, the two areas where I see this come up most frequently are, well, you're using a mod by a mod creator that I don't like, therefore I'm gonna come after you. And then the other place that I see it a lot is, well, I only play the game with vanilla vehicles on, you know, vanilla only settings, and but because you're using mods, you're like cheating the game and, you know, this, that, and the other. And people try to just dunk on players that are just using mods just casually because they like the vehicle or because they enjoy it. And make no mistake, there is no wrong way to play SnowRunner. And if you genuinely believe that someone else playing the game, let's just say that you are a dedicated hard mode player. You only play with vanilla vehicles and you only play in hard mode. 
if you genuinely believe that someone playing the game in normal mode and using a bunch of mods is somehow hurting you or hurting the validity of the game, then you really need to spend some time thinking about uh, how you view the game itself because their playthrough does not affect your playthrough at, at all. Someone using mods, if they want to use a modded vehicle with a million horsepower pulling around trailers that can carry, you know, 15 units of cargo, that in no way, shape, or form hurts your hard mode playthrough, nor does it devalue your hard mode playthrough. It is simply and solely different preferences in a way to play the game. And I know that it might sound really simple to some of y'all, and some of y'all might be like, why are you even having to say this? Isn't that common knowledge? You would be surprised at some of the things that I have seen throughout this game's community from launch to now. I have seen people literally just go after someone for the way that they choose to play the game in a totally separate playthrough than the person that is like, you know, accusing them of playing the game wrong. There is no wrong way to play this game, and there's really no wrong way to play any game, especially when your playthrough has no effect on anyone else's playthrough. And heck, I've even seen it in the mod community, where someone will post that they're using a mod by a certain mod creator, and someone else, not a mod creator usually, but just, you know, someone else that likes a different mod creator's mods, will jump on them and be like, well, why are you using that mod creator's mods? They make crappy trucks. They don't know how to tune. Their models look like crap. When in all reality, like, usually the, the person saying these things can't even create a model, can't even get a truck in-game, can't even code a truck, you know what I mean? But nevertheless, they want to jump on a person for using another mod creator's mods. This is why we run into scenarios where people want to back away from the game as a mod creator. This is why we run into scenarios where people might not be as inclined to post about using a truck because they're worried about someone tearing them apart for it. And it does not lead to a healthy game community. And yes, I am very aware that we all have our differences. We all have different trucks that we enjoy, different ways we like to play the game. But at the same time, we're all here enjoying the same game. And I think that the bottom line is that really at the end of the day, we're all here because we love go going off-road. We're all here because we love trucks. We're all here because we love, you know, g getting in something with big tires, pointing it at the nearest mud bog and flooring it and throwing mud everywhere. And no matter what truck you like to do that in, we're all here for the same reason, because we love trucks. And, you know, no matter what your view on a particular truck or a particular mod creator or a particular way a mod creator might like to build a truck or tune a truck or, or a particular way some player might like to play the game, we're all here at the end of the day for the same reason, because we love this game, we love this series, and we love taking big trucks into the dirt. I don't feel like it's that difficult of a concept to grasp, but so many people end up wanting to make it so much deeper than that. And at the end of the day, I'm like, dude, it's pretty freaking simple. We like getting trucks dirty. And, and that's about, like, that's about it, you know? We like getting trucks dirty. We like customizing them however we see fit. Some of us might like low horsepower. Some of us might like high horsepower. And at the end of the day, this community gets better and benefits when we all really, you know, realize that, hey, maybe you're not a fan of the truck that that particular person is using, or maybe you're not a fan of the way they're playing the game. But you know what? They're enjoying the game. And that really is the bottom line. That's what matters. Are they enjoying the game? Yes? Okay, cool. That's what matters. Not, oh, well, I'm doing a hard mode playthrough and I only use vanilla trucks and wow, you're using mods and you're playing the game on normal mode? Huh, you must be such a casual. You don't even know the true meaning of playing this game. See, it's stuff like that that I see all the time and I'm like, this does not contribute to a chill SnowRunner community, does it? But either way, regardless, those are my points. Those are my opinions. I wanted to get them out there because I haven't had the chance to do a video like this in a while and I really wanted to put that stuff out there. And if you agree, disagree, or anything in between, feel free to keep the conversation going in the comment section down below. And if you would like to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that
that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. And I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.